Hi, my name is Dr. Kendra McCamey from The Ohio State University Primary Care Sports Medicine Fellowship. Today, I will be reviewing the knee as a part of the Family Medicine Radiology Educational Series. This module was created by myself and Dr. Steve Albrechta. We have no disclosures regarding this topic. Our objectives today are to learn a systematic approach to reading musculoskeletal x-rays of the knee, to review three common adult findings on knee x-rays, and to discuss clinical conditions that correlate to knee x-ray findings. In sports medicine, when examining the knee, it's important to have weight-bearing views. This will best show the knees in their natural anatomic positions to assess for alignment, as well as joint space narrowing. There may be some instances where the patient can't bear weight, but when they're able to, you want to specify that you want the x-rays weight-bearing. The common views that are done of the knee are bilateral weight-bearing AP, weight-bearing lateral, and a sunrise view. The next slides will describe these more. The weight-bearing AP evaluates overall alignment of the knee. When reading this x-ray, you want to look first at overall alignment. Next, you want to evaluate all bony contours of the femur, tibia, fibula, and patella. You can start by tracing the outline of the bone itself, looking for any irregularity on the bony cortex. Irregularities you may see are fracture or osteophytes, which are seen in degenerative joint disease. You then want to comment on the bone itself, noting any abnormal findings. The patella will be more difficult to see as it lies over the femur, but you still need to identify and comment on it. You should also note if the patella is not centered in the middle of the femur and sitting more laterally or medially than normal. You want to comment on the medial and lateral joint spaces, noting if there is narrowing, sclerosis, or cystic changes that can be seen with degenerative changes. After you evaluate the bone, you want to look at the soft tissue for any abnormalities. For this x-ray, the patient has normal alignment, but mild medial joint space narrowing bilaterally with sclerosis prominent in the medial joint lines. The lateral view of the knee is best viewed when the knee is flexed to about 30 degrees. This is the standard position for lateral x-rays, so you should not have to state that you want it at 30 degrees. You do need to state that you want the x-ray weight bearing though, or it will be done with the patient lying on his or her side on the table. Evaluation is the same as any view. First, look at overall alignment. Next, evaluate bony contours of the femur, tibia, fibula, and patella, looking for any disruptions in cortex, degenerative changes, or any other abnormality. Then evaluate the bone itself, noting any irregularities. You will next evaluate the patellofemoral joint space. In this view, the medial and lateral joint spaces lie on top of one another, so they are difficult to fully assess, but you still should look at them. Finally, look at the soft tissues for any abnormalities. For this x-ray, the patient has sclerosis and degenerative changes of the patellofemoral joint. There are also loose bodies in the posterior joint, and the patient has an effusion. The effusion is the black layer that is seen anterior and posterior to the femur. The sunrise view is a view that looks at the patellofemoral joint at a different angle than the lateral view. First, assess for alignment of the patella in relation to the femoral condyles. Evaluate the bony contours of both the patella and the femur, starting with the bony cortex, followed by the uh, interior of the bone. Next, look at the patellofemoral joint space. You may want to look at the soft tissues also, but in this view, you do not see much soft tissue. In this x-ray, the patient has normal patellar alignment with mild lateral patellofemoral joint space narrowing on the right knee and osteophytes present on bilateral patella. Three common conditions that you may encounter in an adult patient are knee arthritis, anterior cruciate ligament tear, and patellofemoral joint pain. We have a few cases here to demonstrate these conditions. A 60-year-old male presents with bilateral medial knee pain that gets worse with increased activity. He states he feels stiff first thing in the morning. His knees also swell as the day progresses. He also notes that his pain is worse with weather changes. The patient has a history of a meniscectomy in his 40s, but he doesn't remember which side it was on. On exam, he is a pleasant, obese male. He is bow-legged, which is a varus alignment of the knees. He has full range of motion with crepitus and pain with motion. He has medial joint line tenderness and a moderate effusion. There is minimal warmth of his knee. 
patient's bilateral weight bearing x-rays are shown here. What do you see? On this x-ray, the patient has varus alignment of the knees bilaterally. He has severe medial joint space narrowing bilaterally, with sclerosis in the medial joint line bilaterally, and osteophytes in the bilateral medial and lateral joint lines. This is consistent with knee osteoarthritis. Here is a lateral x-ray in a patient with the same history. Note, this is not the same, the same patient as the last x-ray though. What do you see here? This lateral weight bearing x-ray shows degenerative changes of the patellofemoral joint space identified by patellofemoral joint space narrowing, sclerosis, cystic changes, and osteophytes. The patient also has sclerosis of the medial joint line. There are also loose bodies in the joint. This is consistent with knee osteoarthritis. This is a sunrise view of a patient with the same history. Again, this is not the same patient as the prior x-rays. What do you see here? The sunrise view shows that both patella lie slightly laterally with a lateral patellar tilt. There is joint space narrowing bilaterally on the lateral side of the patella. There are also osteophytes bilaterally. This again is consistent with knee osteoarthritis. With knee osteoarthritis, MRIs are not needed for the diagnosis as the clinical history and x-rays give you the information that you need. If you would get an MRI, you would see cartilage degeneration or defects, insufficiency fractures if the arthritis is advanced causing abnormal forces through the knee, loose bodies, effusions, and degenerative meniscal tears. Musculoskeletal ultrasound is also not needed for the diagnosis of osteoarthritis. There is a limited ability of musculoskeletal ultrasound to see in the joint itself, so it is not the imaging modality of choice for knee osteoarthritis. However, you may use the musculoskeletal ultrasound to guide the injection. Treatment options for osteoarthritis include weight loss, physical therapy, bracing, oral and topical medications, intraarticular injection therapy, and joint replacement. The next case is a 42-year-old female presenting with anterior knee pain. This has been going on intermittently for a year, worse recently when returning to the gym. It is worse with stairs, prolonged sitting, and rising from sitting. Prior to returning to the gym, she was sedentary. She's an obese female. She has tenderness to palpation of her lateral patellar facet. She has normal range of motion of her knees with crepitus. She has positive patellar inhibition, a positive J sign, and a valgus deviation with a single leg squat. The patient's lateral x-ray is here. What do you see? In this lateral x-ray, the patient has normal patellar alignment with minimal osteophytes seen in the superior pole of the patella. She also has narrowing of the patella femoral joint space. A sunrise view of a patient with the same history is here. Note, it is not the same patient as the last x-ray. What do you see here? The sunrise view shows that the patient has bilateral lateral patellar tilt with mild lateral joint space narrowing. Both of these are consistent with patellofemoral pain syndrome. For patellofemoral pain syndrome, many times the x-ray will be normal. An MRI is usually not needed as the clinical history and the x-rays will give you the diagnosis. If you would get an MRI, you may see cartilage degeneration or defects on the posterior surface of the patella, but many times the MRI for patellofemoral pain syndrome is normal also. Treatment options for patellofemoral pain syndrome include physical therapy, knee bracing, activity modification, oral and topical medications, intraarticular injection therapy, and possibly orthotics or footwear changes. The final case is a 21-year-old female soccer player with acute right knee pain after she changed direction chasing a ball and felt a pop with immediate knee pain. She has difficulty weight bearing and has significant knee swelling. She states she feels unsteady with walking and she is unable to fully flex and extend her knee. Her past medical history is negative. You see the athlete immediately after her injury, and on exam, she has a significant effusion with loss of range of motion. She has a positive anterior door test and a positive Lachman test. This is her weight-bearing AP view that is magnified. What do you see? This AP standing view shows normal knee alignment, 
you can see a small revulsion of bone near the lateral tibial plateau. This is called a sigone fracture. When you see this, you need to assume that there is an ACL tear. For this history, you will need an MRI to further assess for internal derangement of the knee. The MRI can show you an ACL tear, as well as any other ligament tear, meniscal tear, or bony edema as a result of the injury. With an ACL tear, you will often see bony edema on the lateral femoral condyle and the posterior lateral tibia consistent with bony contusions. Treatment includes bracing, physical therapy, effusion control by aspiration or medication, and surgery to reconstruct the ligament. In summary, always remember to get weight-bearing views when possible as that is the best way to see what's really going on with the patient's anatomic position and gives a true evaluation of alignment and joint space narrowing. X-rays in patients with osteoarthritis often will show joint space narrowing, sclerosis, osteophytes, and sometimes cystic changes of the bone. Patellofemoral pain syndrome often has normal knee x-rays, but you can see degenerative changes at the patellofemoral joint and patellar malalignment. A sigone fracture is pathognomonic for an ACL tear. Thank you very much.